Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is July 29, 2022. The S&P 500 and the rest of the stock market had a huge week. The S&P 500 gained more than 4.25%, almost 230 points. This is what a backdrop of a disappointed earning from Meta, what it used to call Facebook. Not so robust earning from Microsoft and Google, and not as bad as expected earning from Apple and Amazon. All these earnings setback, along with the second consecutive 75 basis point interest rate hike from the Fed, did not rattle the market. Instead, the S&P 500 finished the month of July with a gain of 9.11%, or 345 points, best monthly gain since last November. So is the recent downtrend over? Is the market moving back to all-time high? Well, that depends on who you listen to. But instead of listening to all those talking heads on what they think, in this video we'll look at the sentiment, the market internals, and the price action of the S&P 500 and the other major market indexes and see what the market is telling us. Stay tuned. Before I begin, let me remind you that I will post a separate video where I will show you the levels and the scenario I'll be watching for next week for the S&P 500 ETF to SPY, the NASDAQ 100 ETF to QQQ, and the Russell 2000 ETF IWM. And if you like the contents in this video and you have not subscribed to this channel, click on the subscribe and be sure to click the thumbs up to give it a like and to help me promote this video on YouTube. On this weekly chart of the S&P 500, we see it had a range of almost 230 points for the week and it gained 4.25% or 168 points. We also see the price that move up to the upper edge of this declining price channel and close the week above the 10-week moving average but below the 40-week moving average. It has not made a higher high yet, therefore it is still in a lower high, lower low price pattern. Although it is one time framing up, the weekly price trend is still down until a higher high and a higher low is made. On this sentiment chart, the VIX is coming down toward the 20 level and it closed on Friday at 21.33. The put call ratio is also coming down toward the uh, 0.75 level, although it's missing a line here. I guess uh, think of swim is missing a data point so it could not draw that line. But on Friday, it closed at 0.77. So this sentiment chart is telling us the market participant are getting less bearish and also getting back a little bit on the risk on side. And looking at the internal, the up-down volume ratio, other than the FOMC announcement day on Wednesday with a 5.9 to 1 on the upside, Thursday and Friday, the rally was accompanied with a up-down volume ratio of less than uh, 3 to 1 in favor of the uh, up volume. And that's not much of a strong buying when the S&P 500 gained close to 1.5% on each of those days. And the uh, daily advance decline, it did show a little bit more broader uh, market participation for all those uh, post-FOMC announcement rally. So that's a positive. The new high, new low almost came to parity. Only three more stocks make a new 52-week low than uh, the number of stocks made 52-week high. So you got 46 stocks made 52-week low versus 43 made new 52-week high. The New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line move above these uh, pivot high here. And while the uh, S&P 500 on a closing basis, it closed below this pivot high. So with this, that kind of give us a little bit of a positive divergence. But on a shorter term, on this uh, time frame here, they are pretty much moving in unison. The Nasdaq up-down volume ratio was not very really impressive on the rally from the last two days of the week. Other than the 4.6 to 1 in favor of the up volume on FOMC announcement day on Wednesday, the other two rallies have 2.3 and 1.3 up-down volume ratio in favor of the up volume. Not very really impressive at all. And the Nasdaq daily advance decline also was not very really impressive other than the Fed day on Wednesday. The advanced south number of the decliners by 2,457. On Friday, with the Nasdaq 100 up 230 points, 
or 1.8 percent, there were only 848 more advancing issue than declining issue. That doesn't show much of a broad market participation. Not much have changed on the new high, new low front for the Nasdaq market. Number of stock making new 52-week low still remain relatively low. And for the Nasdaq cumulative AD line, it is kind of running a little bit behind the Nasdaq 100 index, but it is moving in unison on this shorter time frame. See, the uh, Nasdaq 100 took out this uh, closing high here, while the uh, cumulative AD line in the Nasdaq market is still below this, uh, this high. So that kind of show a little bit of a negative divergence in a little bit longer time frame. So from the sentiment, it is showing the market participant are getting less bearish, but still being cautious. Then the internals are doing okay, but not very impressive for the rally that we've been seeing from the last three trading sessions. So remain cautious. On this daily chart of the S&P 500, we see the price came up and filled this gap and also came up to the uh, channel upper trend line. For next week, we could see a potential breakout above this trend line and possibly get rejected up here in this upper zone range for the expected move near the uh, 4200 level and then get a push back and come down and possibly uh, you know, test the uh, lower range of the expected move. And if that doesn't uh, hold and it uh, go below this expected lower range, then we can see it come down and retest this, uh, this zone here. This uh, what would be the uh, gap fill uh, zone somewhere underneath the uh, 4,000 area and that level doesn't hold. Then we could see it also come all the way down to possibly test this 3,900 level. Now, if it uh, able to uh, break out at the trend line and move above this 4,200, this upper range of the expected move, then we could see that it could possibly come up to this uh, potential resistance zone at 4286. And on this daily NASDAQ 100 chart, we see that the price came up to this uh, upper channel trend line and also came up to this 38.2 Fibonacci retracement level. Also, we put in a higher high. If you notice that it uh, came above, it moved above this uh, pivot high, although it's marginally but nevertheless, it is a higher high. Now for next week, look for a possible pullback for the uh, 12,000 level down here, you know, below this gap zone here, and possibly come down to this 50% uh, level, this retracement level. So look for a potential pullback between 1,200 and the 50% retracement level for possible uh, support. And if we could break above this 13,000 level, you know, uh, break through this resistance zone, then look for this price zone up here near the uh, 13,800 for potential resistance. Look at the daily chart of the Russell 2000. We see that it also came up and filled this gap and moving up toward the 38.2 uh, the, uh, Fibonacci retracement and also getting close to this uh, trend line. So for next week, look for a potential pullback and come back down to uh, backtest this uh, uh, gap zone uh, here. And if it uh, could not hold this gap zone for support, then uh, look for a possibility of uh, coming down to this area near the uh, 1780 for potential support. Now for the upside scenario, if we could break above this uh, resistance zone and get above the uh, 1935, then look forward to uh, continue to make its move toward this uh, upper price zone near the uh, 2100 area. And for the Dow Jones Transportation, we see it move back above this 14,000 level and it has put in a higher high. It took out this high here. So it is putting uh, a higher high above this uh, 14,600. Now for next week, look for a pullback down toward the uh, 14,000 level and possibly come down and back test this 38.2 percent Fibonacci retracement. And for the upside scenario, look for it to continue to move up toward this uh, trend line here and possibly get up near the uh, 15,000 level. And for the Dow Jones Industrial, we see that it also filled this gap and it is moving toward this 33,000 level up to this. Uh, potential resistance zone near the uh, 33,100. 
So for the coming week, the upside scenario is for it to continue to move up and try to break through this resistance zone and move toward the uh, trend line here and possibly get near the uh, 34,000 level. And for the downside, we expect a uh, pullback into this 32,000 level and possibly come down and uh, test this 31,500 area. And on this daily chart for the New York Stock Exchange Composite Index, uh, we notice that it has broken out of this double bottom here and move above the uh, 15,000 level and uh, moving toward this uh, 15,600 area. Now, the 100% major move of this double bottom is 16,000, a little bit above 16,000. So for next week, we're going to watch to see would it be able to come up and take out this 15,500, you know, essentially get above the uh, 15,600 and see would it uh, continue to make its move toward the 100% uh, major move target level. Now, on the downside, if it pulls back, then look for it to come back down and test this uh, 15,000 area, this uh, potential uh, support zone, what used to be a resistance zone, this essentially this uh, pivot high here on this double bottom pivot near the uh, 15,000 level and see what it uh, get a bounce off of it. And if it doesn't, then uh, look for the possibility of might pull back to this 14,600 area and try to find support there. Looking at the 10 year yield, we see that it dipped below this 2.75 level on a backdrop of a 75 basis point interest rate hike by the Fed last Wednesday. So the bond market could be, uh, you know, telling us that it is expecting a slower economy. The U.S. dollar continue to be strong and continue to hover near this 106, 107 level, although it did pull back a bit this week, but uh, still uh, looking for the U.S. dollar to probably chop around near this uh, 104 to 107 range in the near term. And crude oil last week is still holding above the 90 level and basically just moving around on the low 90 to 100. So for the coming week, I would expect the uh, oil probably will make a move uh, to move above the uh, $100 per barrel. Silver finally had a good week. It bounced off of this $18 level and moved nicely back up toward this uh, $20.40 area. Now for the coming week, if it could move above this $20.40 and stay above it, then we could see silver possibly start making a move toward this uh, $22.72 area. If it is unable to hold above the uh, $20.40, then we could see it come back down and possibly retest this uh, $17.80 near the $18 area. Gold also had a uh, pretty good week. It bounced off of this uh, 1716, this price zone, and it is getting back near the uh, 1800 level. And if uh, gold is able to get back above this 1804 level next week, then look for it to uh, continue its move and make an attempt to uh, get back up into the $1900 level. But if it's uh, unable to get above and stay above this 1804 level, this price zone, if we could see gold possibly come back down and retest this price zone between uh, 1716 and 1677 area. So in summary, the market rally after the Fed raised interest rate by three quarter of a percent and with less worse than expected earning from the FANG stocks. Some are questioning the validity of this bounce off the June low. The bears are calling this a bull trap and it's just a short squeeze and the bull are saying the bottom is in. But in regardless, as a trader, we don't make money by correctly classifying the price action. We make money by being on the right side of the trade. Regardless, it is a bear market or a new bull run. It really doesn't matter as long as we listen to the market and trade the price. So what the market currently is telling us is the internals are not weak enough to point to a market crash, nor the internal are so strong that it will rip to a new all-time high. What the market is saying, just wait and see. The politician and the Fed are trying to make lemonade out of lemon. They are telling us we are not in a recession and we are not going into a recession. 
They are changing the interpretation of the gauge that historically been used to monitor the state of the economy in order to tell us their lie. And the market is saying, okay, I play along until you have no place to hide, just like that transitory inflation lie that was used to lie to the American people that this inflation will go away soon. This lie came to a full stop when we see the inflation is at a 40 years high. So will this too negative GDP is not a recession because we have a strong job market. This lie will come to a full stop also when the companies start actually laying off people and the unemployment rate start to come up that exceed the level at the beginning of the pandemic. It's what I call the Midas commercial. Not sure how many of you remember the Midas commercial that ended with the line, you pay me now or you pay me later. See, less painful if you pay me now and more painful if you pay later. So be careful, stay cautious, and take advantage on what the market give you. Be sure to smash the thumbs up to help me promote this video on YouTube. Thank you for watching and stay safe.